You're not a bad musician. You just might need a better ocarina. Many people who venture into the world of ocarina don't know where to start. You browse Google, you look around on Amazon, you run into the sites for various ocarina makers. But it ends up being way too much information all at once. On top of that, many of you have a distinct soft spot for the Legend of Zelda game that introduced you to the ocarina in the first place. Eventually, the curious Zelda fan may stumble upon these ocarinas on Amazon for the low price of like 15 to 25 dollars. 15 dollars for a Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time replica made of ceramic? Say no more. <laughs> I threw money. <laughs> I, I have to pick that all up now. God, that took way too long to pick up that cash. I, I, it, I'm probably gonna be finding like dollar bills hidden on my shelves for the next like two years. But anyways, you make the order. Two days later, your ocarina arrives. You're making great progress to start, but eventually you run into some obstacles. Maybe your high notes aren't coming out too clearly. Maybe some of your notes are a little bit out of tune all the time. You chalk it up to the fact that you're a new player, you're inexperienced, you'll probably get over these if you practice more. But the reality is, it's not you, it's the ocarina. And the fact that you're not giving that like button two day shipping for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, that, that's the like button. You think it's just my hand, but it's the like button. Hey everybody, Andy here and welcome back to another ocarina vlog of education and entertainment, edutainment. That's a category, right? <laughs> I always try to be positive when discussing music or the ocarina, but there are some things that the curious musician who's getting into the ocarina must be warned about. In fact, there are some ocarinas that you should avoid. The following is entirely my opinion. I have no intention to slander or defame any companies, and as such, I will not be naming any specific brands or companies unless they are something that I actually recommend. Let's face it, lots of new ocarina players are interested in the instrument because they heard about it from The Legend of Zelda. I mean, who wouldn't? It's an iconic piece of gaming history. It's one of the best games ever made, and that ocarina is just so... it's so pretty. <laughs> I mean, I even have three Ocarina of Time replicas, one from STL and two from Songbird. But... Not all replicas of the Ocarina of Time are created equally. From a reputable maker like Songbird, you'll find an Ocarina of Time replica for around a hundred bucks. But if you take a quick look on Amazon, you'll see tons and tons of Ocarina of Time replicas, also made from ceramic, that are as low as 15 to 25 bucks, that price range. They're both made of ceramic. They're both pretty faithful replications of the Ocarina of Time. So what's the difference? So I am going to go on Amazon and buy a replica in the $15 to $25 price range and compare it to my ocarina from STL. For the sake of legality, I will not state which company I'm purchasing this ocarina from, but just know that this is a ceramic ocarina of time replica in the $15 to $25 price range. Our Amazon Ocarina has just arrived. Here is the box. It's got a picture of the Ocarina, the kind of disturbing hand-shaped stand, Link and Sheik. On the back, it has a fingering chart. We'll see if these notes are actually in tune. And let's try it out. On the inside, there's a fingering chart with a few songs, both sheet music and tabs. It also comes with a carrying case, a rather disturbing hand-shaped stand for the Ocarina, a strap to wrap around the ocarina, and of course the ocarina itself. And at first glance, it's like, wow, this is really pretty. It's got like a nice and shiny, has a nice color to it. Like, it looks like a totally solid ocarina. Like, if you compare it to my STL ocarina, they look almost identical, though the Amazon one is darker and the STL one comes with the strap already attached. So here is the front. Just a little spin around. The back, top, bottom. It definitely feels like a good ocarina, like at first. But as soon as I put both hands on, the right hand, the angles of the fingers are really weird. Like, 
it does, it's not a totally natural hand position. Like I have to angle my wrist extra weirdly to get it across. And if you're blowing into it as it should, that is a lot of twisting on your right wrist. So that's not ideal. The STL one also has a bit of a wrist angle, but it's not a painful twist. So like, even if the Amazon Ocarina plays really well, it would not be comfortable to play for very long. So now we are gonna do a comparison with the full range of the STL Ocarina, doing the full scale, as well as playing one song. We'll do the scale on both, and then we'll play Seria's song on both. So here we go. All right, now we are on the Amazon Ocarina. This is really out of tune. The bottom notes are kind of okay, but the hand positioning for the right hand makes it really hard to actually play those notes comfortably. The angle that it's at makes you twist in such a weird way that like it's, it's just not a comfortable instrument to hold or play. So even though the right hand, the low notes are in tune, and then for the notes with comfortable fingering on the left hand for the high notes, they're just all out of tune. So if we compare the high C, to the STL's high C. You can tell that they're like a half step at least apart. And then if you compare the high F on the STL in tune, that's in tune compared to So first impressions, not very good for the Amazon 15 to $25 price range Ocarina of Time replica. Now let's play Saria's song on both ocarinas starting with the STL and compare that. Now we will attempt to play Seria song with the Amazon Ocarina. So between these two ocarinas, which I might note are almost exactly the same shape, let your mind wander with that. <laughs> so between these two ocarinas, this one, it's not in tune, it's uncomfortable to hold, and the high notes are totally flat. The air pressure is rather inconsistent, whereas the STL Ocarina of Time replica, which is the closest looking model, the only issue I have with the STL Ocarina of Time replica is that the high notes can be airy sometimes if you don't have the right posture or airflow. If this is your regular ocarina that you play every day, that's not a problem, but this is not my everyday ocarina. It's just, it's one that I've owned for eight years, but I haven't played much for the last like four or five years. So the clear winner is the STL. However, if you're interested in buying a Zelda replica, there's other great options such as Songbird, the Ocarina of Time replica that I have wanted most ever since I started buying Ocarinas, is that by Spencer Ocarinas. If you look at it, it is so pretty. It's also custom made to order. The only drawback is that, is that it is twice the price of the Songbird one, which is already 40 bucks more than the STL one. So if you're interested in getting an Ocarina of Time replica, your best value will be STL, your best balance between prettiness and value will be Songbird, and the best overall experience, if money is not a concern, will probably be Spencer's. And if you're looking to use an Ocarina of Time replica as a performance ocarina for solos, I would recommend the double Ocarina of Time by Songbird. In conclusion, I got my green tea right here. <laughs> I know that this video has had a lot of ocarina bashing on the inexpensive Amazon ceramic Ocarina of Time replicas, 
But that isn't to say they're all bad. The Amazon Ocarina of Time replicas, made by a bunch of different companies, they are pretty. Like, if, you are, if your goal is not to play the ocarina as an instrument, then by all means, go ahead and get these. Like, these are great as a decoration or as a cosplay piece, but it is really luck of the draw. Some people have reported that their inexpensive Ocarina of Time replicas from Amazon have been perfectly fine, perfectly in-tune instruments, but most people have reported that they are out of tune and not so fun to play. But if you just have a Link cosplay and need an Ocarina of Time to carry around, this might be your best bet. For many people, inexpensive ceramic Ocarina of Time replicas are their first introduction to ocarinas. So for many of us, there's special sentimental value for these inexpensive instruments. However, that can be harmful because if the instrument is out of tune like mine was, it may make a new player think that they are the problem when in fact it's the instrument. It's a great visual piece because it's inexpensive and really pretty, but it is not a great instrument. These Amazon ocarinas are so cheap because they are most likely mass-produced with zero to no quality control. In order for the ocarina community to thrive, it is crucial to support makers who produce high-quality ocarinas. Because you can't have an ocarina community without ocarinas that are good! If you want a Zelda replica, that's great! You can get one from STL, Songbird, or Spencer. And if you want something else, you can look around on any of those websites. I tend to avoid Amazon for ocarina buying unless it's from someone like Night by Noble or Songbird or Focalink or something like that. Go to the maker's websites and shop there. If the ocarina is a step on your musical path and you don't really care whether or not you have a Zelda replica, here is what I recommend. 1. Buy a good plastic ocarina like the Night by Noble. See how you like it and you might decide the ocarina just isn't the instrument for you and that's totally okay. Or you'll have this good plastic ocarina, you'll get into it, and you'll want to go beyond. <laughs> really get comfortable holding the ocarina. A plastic ocarina, if you drop it, there's a very, very low chance that anything bad will happen to the ocarina. You're more likely to damage your floor if you drop it. <laughs> but a ceramic ocarina, as most professional ocarinas are made of, is very, very breakable. People have dropped ceramic ocarinas from as low as a drop of six inches to one foot just because the angle was weird or the floor was really hard. So I cannot emphasize enough, with your plastic ocarina, before you get into a ceramic ocarina, get comfortable holding it. And if you have a ceramic ocarina and you haven't gotten used to carrying it yet, wear a neck strap while you play it. When you're experienced, neck strap can get in the way and can be annoying, but if it's between dropping your precious, expensive ocarina made of ceramic versus a little bit of extra comfort, don't drop your precious ceramic ocarina. Wait until you're more comfortable holding it in general to lose the strap. And if you're looking for a good, high-quality Alto C ocarina, you'll probably want to start in the $70 to $100 range for ceramics. You can find stuff that's lower, like the STL Ocarina of Time for $60, but generally, it's safest to assume that a good ceramic ocarina will be at least $70. And the last and most important step of ensuring you have a great ocarina journey is to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. I have more ocarina edutainment in store. So if you subscribe and you're new to playing the ocarina, I will have more resources ready for you to go. So if you're a new player, this could be a valuable subscription for you to have. All right, hard sell over. I have my mask on because the air quality is not great in Northern California right now. All right, so to illustrate how important it is to not drop your ceramic ocarina, I will use this inexpensive Amazon ocarina and break it for a good cause. So I've never dropped an ocarina before. I have never broken an ocarina because I am really careful with my instruments and I firmly believe that everyone should be careful with their own ocarinas. However, as an infographic and for the sake of science, I will break this ocarina today. We will drop it three times. First, from one foot, because that might simulate a small drop. And if it survives that, great. We're also dropping it on concrete, so all damage will be amplified. <laughs> so we'll drop it from one foot, then from waist height, and then from shoulder height. To simulate a small drop, dropping falling out of your pocket, and dropping it while playing. So I got my GoPro right here going at 
120 FPS or 240 FPS. So we're gonna have really good slow mo. Okay. One foot. Oh! So just a drop from one foot. This is the damage. The tip has already broken. And now let's drop it from three feet. Oh! Oh my God. I guess we're not gonna drop it from five feet because that shattered. I hope that this has taught you the importance of taking good care of your ceramic ocarinas because <sighs> they are breakable. I'm like feeling a little sad now that I've broke this ocarina because like <laughs> I've never broken an ocarina before and this is just like, I've destroyed an ocarina of time. <laughs> but it was for science. Now you know that you must be very, very, very careful when you have a ceramic ocarina. It could break super easily. I may have owned that ocarina for less than 24 hours, but at least I got a disturbing hand stand thingy and a cool padded bag. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>